Hey, so fix a lot here. I'm going to show you how to install a full suspension into a 2008 Porsche 997. This is the same procedure as most 997s as well as the 996. Um, I've been working with uh, Ira Ramin to, uh, at Terrett Engineering to basically put together this kit and now I'll show you how to install it. Um, basically what we have is a um, we're going to do something that's going to work for um, a mild track setup so you can pretty much drive the car every day uh, but it works out well um, for uh, street as well as track so uh, we're only going to go with the coilovers, sway bars, um, Terran engineering drop links and a GT3 front uh, lower control arms, just the front, not the rear. Uh, so the setup that we have here, uh, first off is the sway bars. Uh, these are the GT3 sway bars, factory GT3 uh, rear, uh, which is 24 millimeters. It uh, has three holes here, even though there's only two showing. This one's covered by paint. Uh, we're going to hook up the rear drop link to the middle one, um, as far as stiffness is concerned. Um, they come with the uh, bushings and uh, the limiters here are already uh, cast in or yeah, I guess it's maybe cast in or set in, welded into um, the sway bar itself. On the front sway bar, this is a 27 millimeter uh, sway bar, it's a GT3 uh, hollow one uh, that's made by Terret. Uh, they make a hollow one that's a lot lighter than the uh, factory solid one. Uh, but it is 27 millimeter. Um, it has the same five holes as the as the original GT3 sway bar has, and um, we're going to be mounting it, the front drop links, into the fourth one here, uh, which is second from the st uh, most stiff position um, uh, on both sides. Next, we have the GT3 uh, lower control arms. Uh, these have a slot in them. Is different than the you know the factory one that you have on on non GT3s, which just has a center hole. This one actually has a slot in here to compensate for caster, uh, so you can actually move uh, that that fork arm that goes here um, back a little bit uh, in order to compensate for caster. Uh, the nice thing about the GT3 is they are adjustable uh, through shims um, on the lower control arm, and the way we're going to set this up and Terret also puts this together, uh, is it gave me a, because I have electronic lights, um, they gave me a bracket for that, and then uh, two sets of shims. These are 16 millimeter and these are 4 millimeter. Um, and so that's going to be 20 millimeters on each side uh, that are going to go in the slot here. And that's going to give me an adjustment of anywhere between 1.8, 1.9 um, negative. Uh, camber to probably up to about three degrees uh, negative. Uh, we're going to set the front at about 2.5 uh, so you could probably accomplish that just with the 16 millimeter uh, spacer but I ordered the extra um, four millimeters here just to give me a little bit more range so I may go to like 2.6 in the front and we'll set the rear at about 2.2 negative uh, camber. Um, and then um, they also provide the spacers here because the thickness of the GT3 control arm uh, that interfaces with that fork arm that, that goes right here, uh, you need these spacers here, one top, one bottom, in order to compensate for uh, the thickness. Um, the last thing is we're going to install uh, coilovers. Um, and this is uh, the Bilstein B16. Uh, coilovers and they have um, this passum, uh, you know, the active uh, stability management uh, uh, setup so that you can actually set up uh, uh, different dampening by just pushing a button in your car. If your car is set up with the uh, PASM uh, setup, this is the route to go. Uh, Bilstein makes a this B16 unit uh, and this is the rear uh, and uh, they also make a unit for the front that has the that has the electrical connection here also. 
So um, this is a nice setup if you want to do street track. Uh, it adjusts, it allows you adjustability as far as height is, con is concerned, and then it's electronically controlled uh, as far as dampening is concerned. Before you raise up the car to remove the wheels to install the suspension, take a measurement of the center of the hub to the, the top of the fender uh, well on all four. Um, you'll want to take that measurement and determine what that is. What I got was 14 and a quarter uh, on both fronts and about 14 and three fourths on the rear. So that's about a half inch difference between front and rear and you want to maintain that in order to get as close to the rake that you want uh, to maintain uh, on the vehicle. Uh, some racers will lower the rear a little bit more uh, such that the difference is basically the same uh, or maybe a quarter of an inch more uh, gap. Um, you know it's up to you you can experiment with that and and talk to your suspension person on how best to uh, set the car up, but you just want to take some initial measurements so that you at least have a reference. When you put on the Bilsteins, you're still going to have to go to the, to, to the alignment shop, so you want to get it as close as possible um, to the lowered stance that you might want, and so you might want to bring it down, uh, you know, an inch or something like that, and all the way around, and then, and then bring it in for alignment. I noticed there wasn't a lot of video on how to raise your 997 or 996. So under the 997 there's an area right here in the front uh, that you can use with a small aluminum jack to lift up. This is actually strong enough to hold up the vehicle. And then you will have room to then you utilize the this, this thing, the jack point, uh, to put your jack stand under. So try to get up the two, you know, both sides on the front first and then move to the rear. Then for the rear, there's a section right here uh, underneath the suspension. Uh, this is right where they do the uh, camber adjustment, uh, but this aluminum carrier here is strong enough also to uh, support the vehicle. If you have the if you have both fronts done, then you can just put a jack under this one side, either left or the right, lift up the car, and the whole back will come up, uh, and then you'll be able to put the jack stands under. Uh, the proper locations just forward of the uh, rear wheels. This is the front section without the wheel. Uh, what you'll want to do is remove the sway bar link, so the top as well as the bottom sway bar link. Then uh, remove this sensor um, housing. Basically unclip it. This is for the uh, brake wear sensor as well as the ABS. Unclip it here and then remove uh, this 10 millimeter bolt uh, to release it from the carrier. Because uh, what we're going to want to do is swing the entire um, uh, strut out uh, in order to remove it from, from this carrier right here. The other pieces you're going to want to remove on the front is the brake. Uh, Ducting shield here. Uh, remove that off the off the uh, lower control arm, and then back here is the lower control arm pivot bolt. Uh, you want to loosen this. Eventually, you're going to remove it because you're going to be removing the uh, uh, the control the lower control arm in order to put the GT3 one in. So from the top, there's three bolts here that you're going to want to loosen and then the unit will drop down. Make sure that you disconnect the Porsche Active Suspension Management or the PASM cord or cable here first before you drop that out. The other thing you'll want to do is remove the bottom pan. It's a series of Torx fasteners and after you remove this you're going to have to get to the subframe in order to remove the sway bar, uh, the front sway bar. So. Um, once you have this removed, you'll note also the position, if you have uh, electronics lights, uh, you'll notice position of the sensor. You're going to have to pull that uh, from below and then line up 
the Litronic light uh, bracket in the GT3 lower control arm uh, in pretty much the same position. Once you have the lower pan removed, you'll be able to have access to the Litronic arm here. So just make note of the angle that it's at um, when attached to the original uh, lower control arm and then you'll try to attain the same angle uh, when you put on the GT3 um, unit. Uh, and then after you remove the bottom one here you can uh, get some clearance and then you'll be able to get to the bottom of the um, this lower sway bar bracket or you know this is the one that attaches to the end of the sway bar you'll be able to get that one out too. The brake had to be removed. This is the front brake and I hung it off to the side. This is in order to get clearance for the hub and strut assembly to, to drop down. You have to drop this whole thing down and disconnect the fork here from the lower control arm. Once you completed that then you can slide this down and then it'll tilt outwards and you can remove the old uh, strut assembly. Once that's removed then you can put in the new one and then uh, reassemble it back. But first we'll replace the stock lower con control arm with the GT3 lower control arm. So first we have the GT3 control arm next to the stock one and you can see when you place them side by side GT3 with a 16 millimeter spacer is going to be a little bit longer than the stock one. 16 millimeters is the maximum we'll be able to put in here because the nylock nuts that are here um, won't really be able to handle that 4 millimeter spacer that I purchased so uh, we'll just keep it with the 16 millimeter um, Ira Ramin tells me that uh, you can get about 2.5, maybe 2.6, but about 2.5 negative camber here. The Litronic bracket is part of this unit. Um, it, gets, it slides in as part of the spacer, and you can see that the general location right here is about the same location as the one um, on the stock unit from the inner pivot point. So we're looking at the left side lower control arm. Next is the suspension. Here you can see this and the built spring unit. A uh, lot different. We're going to have to compress the spring and remove the top hat because the top hat has to be transferred over here along with uh, the nut and the lockdown plate here. So um, you're going to have to transfer both of these, or these three pieces, or at least these two pieces, over to that side um, onto the uh, newer unit. Uh, this one is, seems to be in good shape, so we'll go ahead and remove this. Um, if you're going to use this again, you'll want to clamp this outer washer. It's keyed, and then, and then remove uh, the nut here. But make sure you have spring compressor on the spring here to take the tension off of here, off the top plate before you remove it, and also wear uh, protective goggles. Here's the unit, uh, the front strut. So I've uh, applied spring compressors on here, and you can see that it's relatively loose. I can rotate the spring. So it'll be safe to remove this with an, with an air ratchet or air hammer. And I just clipped off this, you know, the Damtronic piece on the stock one because uh, this shock is really no good. It's already seen a lot of damage to the, um, the limiter here. Uh, and even the top plate is bent a little bit. So I'm going to remove this in order to get to... Uh, just parts of this uh, that we're going to try to reuse. It's really just the, the rubber bearing up here. Uh, that's the only piece we're going to reuse. 
I had some trouble finding documentation uh, on the internet with regards to the way things are set up um, on the B-16s. So this is the original upper shock mount that was removed and it has it comes along with a couple of pieces. It comes along with a, a spring interface or it's like a bushing, it's rubber and then kind of a metal and rubber bearing surface. And both of these need to be transferred onto the new one. So you just want to move these guys over like this. And then the B16s come with a spring interface here. And that sits right on top of that rubber bearing surface, or rubber uh, spring interface surface, the old one. So you got the metal, the rubber one, you got the rubber piece here, and then, and then this unit goes right on top. And this gets threaded through right onto the um, to the B16 unit. This is the front unit. So the nut comes off, you've got this top washer that will go here, and then you know you've got the nylock nut here. There's nothing to hold this thing in place, so I, I'm going to use an air ratchet or air hammer uh, to assemble it. Um, they give you a spring kind of interface here. Um, I think it's to keep the noise down. And you basically just thread this on like this. Make sure the spring interface is well. And this is a close-up of it. You've got all the units together. And then um, up top here, you'll want to assemble a, uh, the washer, kind of cup side up and then assemble the uh, nut onto here. As you recall, um, my old unit here had a bend in it, right here. So um, I bought these new ones. Um, these are Lemforder. They're, um, they make them for the OE, so they're, they're basically OE quality, but about half the price or less. Um, I got these on eBay. And um, I'm gonna use an air ratchet, just torque this all the way down till it limits out. Um, and uh, you should be ready to go. Just a quick note, um, you'll be able to get with an air hammer or uh, air gun, you'll be able to get it down to about this point and then it'll just kind of keep spinning. Um, I neglected to tell you that it's possible to work a 22 millimeter um, wrench along with a uh, Torx bit because the PSS9s have a Torx um, piece that, that, that actually holds it in place. So as long as you're kind of working it like this, um, you should be able to finish off kind of the rest of the uh, torque spec up to about um, 35 pound feet should be sufficient. The nut is nylock, so as long as you kind of hold it in place and again get it to the limit so that it is uh, good and snug. Um, this, should be, this should be enough. Wanted you to also note that the B16s have the um, Porsche Active Suspension Management System or the PASM system uh, plug that's actually from the bottom. So when you slide this in um, to your carrier, make sure that this is stretched out and you don't pinch off the wire. And then once it's in, you can use this kind of slot here to tuck it up. And then they give you a cap that goes on the bottom. And then a bunch of tie wraps that will wrap this basically up the side of the unit. Um, and then there's a, uh, there's a hole that you can actually bring it through uh, off on the side. Um, that's uh, there's an additional hole that's off on the side here and then uh, you can slip your cable down and connect up and then still hook up your uh, your passing unit. The next thing is to remove the splash shields on both sides so this is kind of a lower pan and then part of the integrated wheel well uh, splash shield and you're going to get an exposure of the suspension like this. In order to remove the sway bar, 
which is here. Um, you have to undo these two um, nuts up on top and that'll loosen up the bracket, the top bracket above it. And then um, there's a series of bolts that are holding up this carrier. There's uh, two in the front, uh, two in the midpoint back here, and then a couple in the rear. Um, so there's about six to eight that you're actually going to have to loosen up. The one up here, you're actually going to have to take off completely. I think there's, there's actually four across the front. But up here, you're going to have to take it off completely. The carrier um, is going to drop down, and then that will allow you to, to basically wiggle out the old sway bar and then put in, put in the new sway bar. Okay, this is what it looks like when you've unbolted this carrier. And there's a little bracket down here that I'm wiggling around. This holds, um, suspends the uh, hoses off of the carrier. So you have to undo that off the bottom and then just loosen the top one. You could take it out all the way if you want, but I just loosened it in order to get clearance. Then once you have it at this point, um, you leave in the back here, you leave one of the bolts in um, on each side and then it'll just kind of hang like this and then you just remove the bar by lifting it out and then forcing it out the front and then you put the new bar in with the new bushings uh, going in and then the assembly is in the reverse. A few notes before I move to the rear suspension. Here's the pivot of the GT3 control arm lower control arm and uh, you don't want to torque these down just yet the the torque spec is like 85 pound feet um, but you want to put the wheels on the car get it on the ground and then you can go ahead and get that torque down um, and since you're bringing it to the alignment shop you don't have to really get it to 85 um, you let the alignment shop go ahead and do that um, just as long as maybe you get it to you know 30 40 pound feet um, that's fine uh, again, don't do that until uh, the car is fully on the ground. Uh, the rest of the specs for the 18 millimeter bolts, like uh, for this cross member, the fork piece that, that attaches to the GT3 arm, um, that's like uh, 112 uh, pound feet, and so are the um, uh, 18 millimeter bolts for the subframe. Because uh, the toughest part is actually putting in the sway bar. Um, because you have to drop the subframe just a little bit and then um, uh, you know wiggle out the sway bar and get get the new one back in there um, and so you want to torque the bolts that are coming up from the bottom uh, all the 18 millimeter ones the bigger ones to about 112 uh, there's a couple of smaller ones up front and those go to about 85 um, these two on top of the uh, sway bar uh, those on this side will only go to about 65 pound feet. That's the spec. And that should be it for the front piece here. Don't forget to install the, um, the GT3. Well, this is just a, an, an air ducting thing that goes uh, to the front brakes, uh, but it attaches to this, uh, to this cross member arm here. Don't forget to put that back on. Um, and that should be it for the front half here. This is the back part of the front suspension. The top stabilizer piece, since it holds the, um, the suspension in also, uh, this top one goes to about 85 pound-feet. Uh, the lower one's at 65. Um, and you can see I, I don't actually have it connected to the stabilizer bar because much like the D GT3 uh, control arm, let's say pivot point back here you don't want to hook these these things up or you don't want to let's say tighten uh, anything until everything's set on the ground uh, again you can let the alignment shop go ahead and adjust that uh, if you do want to hook it up before you um, take it to the alignment shop uh, again I recommend the the fourth one here um, right up here uh, so from the very end, one, two, three, four, uh, would be the right place to uh, connect the uh, st the sway bar link. Um, on the GT3 control arm, the offset hole 
that's there. You know, there's basically two holes, uh, one directly in the center for that fork unit, um, and then one that's like slightly ahead of it. Make sure when you're when you're mounting up the GT3 control arms that that offset hole is towards the front of the car, not towards the rear of the car. Um, because with the extended GT3 control arms, uh, you're going to need that offset hole to be more towards the front in order to basically hook up the um, lower control arm fork arm um, to the GT3 lower control arm itself. On the rear suspension, we're going to start from underneath the car. There's a bolt that runs down here at the bottom of the strut. Uh, that we'll have to remove, but the first thing uh, you got to remove is the sway bar. This one's a little easier to get to because the mounting brackets right here it's fully exposed and then at the other end here um, it's also fully exposed. So first remove the sway bar uh, then we're going to undo uh, this bolt down here at the very bottom of the strut and then uh, see if the suspension drops. If it doesn't drop we may have to take off some other links in order to get it to rotate a little bit um, but we're going to try to see if we can pull this off just with those two and then uh, eventually we'll be moving to the top of the strut and this you'll get to um, from inside the car I'll show you how to remove the package tray in order to get to the three bolts that secure it up top so I've loosened and removed the bolt that holds the bottom of the strut. You can kind of see the original hole right here and then the strut kind of moved over. The other thing that I did was uh, to um, remove this bolt here uh, for tow. Um, that's in order to give it a little bit of clearance so that you can get the bolt out. And the uh, other thing that I loosen, and this one's a little bit hard to see, is back in here, which is the control arm. Um, I just loosen that so that it would have a little bit more drop uh, to the suspension. Okay, now we're moving to the interior. This is with the uh, back seats down, or the back of the back seats down. and It'll expose this speaker box here. Uh, this is on a track so it slides out but what you have to do is you have to first remove the Bose speaker covers and then there's a Torx fastener here and one on the other side also you have to remove this too um, which is the catch for the for the seat back uh, this is also a Torx fastener this has to be removed and then the whole uh, box slide slides forward you just have to remember to uh, disconnect the speakers um, when you do that The tray comes out fairly easy and this is the connection for the speakers. It just plugs in. You just squeeze it here on the sides and pull it out. Um, then there's a, a like a carpet that's over this area here and you lift under from right around here, lift it off and then this will be exposed. The um, shock tower mounts are right underneath this pad. You just remove this pad and then you'll be able to see uh, the shock tower mounts and then there's a little bit of insulation here but uh, the PASM unit or the Porsche Active Suspension Management System is right down here the connections right here so you're gonna have to reconnect up with your Bilstein B16s uh, right into this area but you'll be able to unbolt the top of the shock towers right in from this area here once you remove this pad Once you loosen the upper three strut uh, mount bolts or nuts, um, it'll slide off of this unit here. And so what you want to do is you want to push it forward and then, I'm sorry, push it inboard and then push it forward. And then the, sh the, the strut will kind of drop off of this perch here. And then you'll be able to remove it right out of the car like that. Here's the two rear suspension pieces, the new one and the old one. Old one has uh, 
it had some leaks that's why there's some oil there so I'm going to discard this probably just uh, keep the springs to resell or something like that um, when it comes to the top hats here uh, this here which was kind of like a offset piece this is no longer going to be used only the top only the very top hat's going to be reused in here and I'll show you when I take this apart notice on this uh, top hat there is a tab here and that tab is very important that's the one that faces um, outwards or outboard um, and then you've got the two outer mounts and then and the one inner one here so that's how it's going to look when it's transferred over onto the Bilstein. Here's the factory unit. This is the spring plate. Uh, this piece just comes right off, and so you want to remove that. Then you have uh, the aluminum ring that comes off the Bilstein. What I've done already is there was a rubber kind of gasket. That, that rubber gasket actually goes onto the top hat here and this then interfaces like this so that there's not metal to metal contact here between the two otherwise it might get a little bit noisy uh, there is metal to metal contact between the aluminum ring and the spring uh, but you have that under tension so once you thread through uh, the passum cord uh, it is keyed this is keyed right here so when you slide it on here um, you can use a crow's foot and then torque it down to 59 pound-feet. If it's difficult for you to do that um, on the floor, uh, you can put you can reattach this to the car. Um, I've got the uh, locator plate removed here so that you can you can get a, a wrench on here. Um, that locator plate just pops off. It's a plastic piece, but um, once you mount this in, you can get in the car with a torque wrench and uh, torque it down to 59 pound-feet um, and then and then this again this tab is uh, outer so it's it's outboard and it helps to locate uh, the three the three um, studs for the chassis suspension is in I adjusted the tie rods because uh, when you push out the suspension with the GT3 control arm you're gonna have extreme toe in so you have to loosen this up and and kind of open this up so that you get the um, wheels to basically zero toe hardest part of the install in the front is the sway bar primarily because you have to drop the uh, subframe down in order to get the uh, sway bar out going that way and the new one coming in um, make sure that you don't tighten up the um, inner pivot points, the inboard pivot points. Of the, this is the GT3 control arm uh, until you have the car on the ground and then get it up to uh, almost up to torque. Okay, this is also another view of the front. You can see I installed the electronic sensor onto the bracket that comes off the GT3 control arm here. Um, and the GT3 control arm, you got to remember that uh, that fork that bolts into it, uh, the other part of the lower control arm, make sure that you put it in the hole that is uh, forward of where the center point was. Um, when you get these GT3 control arms, you got to make sure that you mount it such that the offset hole is going forward and not backwards. Uh, that'll ease the installation. Um, the other thing that I did here was uh, on the sway bar, it is mounted to the fourth one from the loosest point. So there's five holes. It's uh, second to the last one uh, as far as tension is concerned. Also, this is the Terret um, sway bar link. And there was an issue where it was angled a little bit far inwards this way. And um, in order to kind of make it so that it's pretty much straight up and down I had to add an extra spacer right here and fortunately Terret had sent me some extra hardware so I was able to put that spacer in in order to make this um, more straight up and down again you don't want to tighten the inboard 
um, pivot points until the car is uh, back on the ground. Finally, here's a view of the coilover. What I had to do was uh, raise the coilover from the factory setting uh, that they provided with this coilover. I had to move this up about seven or eight turns um, such that when the car sits down on the ground it is about three quarters inch lower than um, where it was from the factory for an S. And so the center of the hub to the top of the fender uh, well was about 14 and a quarter inches and I had lowered it to about 13 and a half um, both fronts. Here's the rear suspension. This was a little bit more straightforward. I had to lower this um, from the factory setting about 8 to 10 turns and uh, I wanted to again lower the car about 3 quarters of an inch and then from stock it was at about 14.75 uh, center of hub to top of rear fender well and I brought it down to about 14 inches on both sides. Another view from underneath the car, the rear, you can see the sway bar link pretty much straight up and down. It is mounted at the top section here to the middle hole of the sway bar. Again, you do not want to tighten um, the inner pivot points until uh, the car is on the ground. And that goes for uh, the control arm here as well as as the uh, toe adjustment back here. But you do want to get uh, the car to about zero toe before you drive it into the shop uh, just so that the car tracks properly um, when going in.